Now, if you're looking for new irons right now, then uh, these two are likely to be on your list if you're looking for optimal in terms of forgiveness and ball speed, just as much help as you can possibly get with that iron in hand. You see, it's fair to say that every brand right now has got an iron or a club that fits what you're looking for in terms of performance attributes. And in these two, the focus really is on ball speed. It's on ultimate forgiveness. It's on an iron that would be certainly classed in that game improvement category. The two irons are from Titleist. It's a new T350. And the other has been around a little while longer. It's tailor-made and it's their Stealth Iron. So once again, we'll be putting these very much in a head-to-head -head and Trackman will determine what is the difference between these two in terms of data parameters. But we first got to highlight what the differences are in terms of specification. And the big one being the loft. So although the T350 is aimed as a game improvement iron, it's not gone down that route of strong lofted irons. The 7 iron is 30.5 degrees, whereas on the other hand, TaylorMade and Stealth have gone into that strong loft category. And the Stealth model is astonishingly 28 degrees as a 7 iron. So clearly, we're already expecting to see some differences in terms of distance. But if you do watch this channel regularly, you know we pay, uh, well, very little attention to what a manufacturer says. We pay very little attention to what Loft says, because what we found is over the years is that, uh, well, there are very much uh, a number of factors that go into making a golf club perform, and only one of them contributing factors has been the Loft. So it'll be interesting to see that's, uh, what is it, two and a half degrees strong aloft in terms of the stealth. What will it do in terms of performance? So what you'd expect to see, uh, lower spinning, further distance. I think that's the two obvious things, uh, lower launching. Um, and then the descent angle shouldn't be as great as what we see in the opposite with the T350, which should be higher launching, hoping to generate a bit more spin, hoping to get more of a descent angle. We shall see, and Trackman will give us the answers very shortly. The key for me is, first of all, there's a bit of a price difference in these two, but they're definitely aimed at the same player. The Stealth is definitely a chunkier version, but as two manufacturers, they both class these as game improvement models, but I would suggest that the T350 is far more refined in its size and profile. I'm looking down the, uh, the sole width, definitely visually the Stealth looks bigger to me, and then when I switch them both over, well, that's a difficult one to be honest with you, there are a lot of similarities sat behind the ball in terms of that top line and then obviously there's the shelf appeal element some images up on screen for you now i don't know which way you'd be drawn i love what taylor may did with the stealth lineup this year full stop but having said that for me i'd perhaps be drawn to that shiny finish on the t350 right now which as i've said in my initial review of this product is uh, a real standout product in the t-series lineup which has been fantastic from Titleist, i have to say different shafts um, but ultimately we're looking for just a, a similar weight similar flex or same flex but what do they do and what are the real noticeable differences when we put these in a head-to-head -head? well first of all first ball hit with the t350 what is noticeable and as you move down the line in the t-series lineup you go from a real sort of great soft feel in the t150 t100s t150s and then it gets gradually louder. And the T350 uh, sort of peaks in terms of that noise level. And once again, you go into that sort of clickier sound that you sometimes get in this iron. And hopefully you pick that up again. Now, it's not a big deal for everybody. For me, it's not the best sounding iron, uh, in my opinion. I prefer it to sound different. Having said that, it is what it is, and it's pretty much what I'd say is, is how I expected it to sound. There you go, real nice Chris, that last one in particular. Good strike. It's a confidence um, inspiring sound is what I'll say. That ball feels like it's fizzed off the face. 
interesting enough 30.5 degrees seems to launch the ball really high for me um, and what I'm seeing is a fairly long carry good launching ball then switch up straight into the style and this is why I like doing these head to head side by side because this is where you see and here at least the real differences between the two now the interesting bit for me and I hope you picked it up is straight away the sound is totally different and I will be swayed towards the stealth I don't know what they did this year in terms of um, this stealth model but I think they did a great job in terms of sound and feel and I'm pretty sure that you could have heard, heard the difference uh, between the two it's not hugely different and neither of them will be you know they're a long way from being forged irons and butter soft that's not something we're going to mention within this review but again for me what seems visible in the few shots that I've hit and uh, obviously prior to doing this recording trackman data there is a visual difference in terms of ball flight in that the stealth is more of a lower penetrating ball flight and that two and a half degrees of loft is visible the interesting thing is and what you've got to what we've got to look at with trackman is how much difference does that have in terms of carry distance and maybe more importantly what does or negative impact does it have on descent angle because the problem with strong lofted irons is if you get that just a little bit too um, too strong in terms of the loft it can be a little bit flat in terms of the ball flight which has a negative impact on descent angle and if you've not got spin in there then uh, well you've got a bit of a problem in stopping balls on greens right I mean in terms of the two irons forgiveness is something that I really do fail to quantify um, all I do know is you hit the ball somewhere in and around that club face and the things absolutely fizz off them the notable differences side by side is purely just the sound and feel elements and for that I'd be swayed towards a stealth but from a looks perspective I'd be going at that T350 I ain't going to go on anymore we ain't going to hit any more shots we're just going to go straight into track man and see if we can find out what separates these two irons in terms of performance today's video is brought to you in partnership with hot golf the online golf mega store bringing you the hottest deals in golf and of course the clubs featured in today's video find the link to the hot golf website in the description below and check out some incredible giveaways and offers Well, if you've been tuning into the channel of late, you've seen plenty of head-to-heads and hopefully uh, you're enjoying them as much as I am filming them. But if you've got any suggestions as pretty much these videos have come from as to products that you'd like to see side by side, then please stick a uh, comment in the section down below and we'll do our best to oblige. Um, this is probably the weirdest set of numbers in terms of a comparison video I've probably done because there are so many anomalies in there. It is just why this whole idea of one club does one thing one club does another thing based on loft it does this and strength of loft can do so many negative things but does it really let me explain let's get the numbers on screen for you now uh, two comparisons um, let's keep it nice and simple and then try and break down what's yeah what is this all about so the carry distance 168 on the weaker lofted t350 160 on the stealth a club head speed of 78.7 versus 80.3 so there's some explanation there slightly faster club head speed with the tight list they had different shafts in and i seen this kind of anomaly interestingly enough in that i was swinging this amt shaft even though it's same weight and flex seemed to uh, generate a better club head speed in my hand so we've got to bear that in mind but the ball speed of 113 versus 112 means that from an efficiency point of view the stealth was doing a little bit better in terms of ball speed but again that's that strength aloft you then go into a spin number which we'd have expected to see in my opinion at least anyway a higher number on the t350 and in fact we don't we see far better numbers on the stealth an average of four and a half versus three six this is where i'd almost expect to see that in reverse because of like i say that strength of loft and then you've got the launch angle being 19.7 on the 350 versus 18.5 on the stealth so okay 
that's what we expected to see a higher launching ball with a 350 land angle 44.5 44.4 so nothing to split them there peak height 89 versus 84 and to be honest with you not a lot to split them there so work that out well basically we've got a carry distance with both that we uh is surprising in many ways i expected the stealth to be longer and like i said that spin number is very difficult to um quantify because we expected something very different and then in all the other parameters the performance is pretty much similar like i said descent angle peak height ball speed very very similar indeed but see other things that have gone into it in in, in terms of that additional launch angle that we've seen from the t350 that has allowed for me that carry distance to be just that little bit further but there is no doubt that within this lineup you're starting to see and i say lineup from both now you're starting to see the compromises that you have to make when you want to go into this kind of category at the end of it all i'll throw up some um, numbers for you it's important that you see these because there are some variables in the carry distances within both um, and we've got a sort of 160 carriers being the shortest carry with the 350 the longest being 172.9 so it's 12 yards difference there and in the stealth we've got a 154 versus a 165 so again a 10 yard difference so you don't get in my opinion the consistency out of this kind of iron in terms of front to back dispersion and that is a real thing that it's just this genre of clubs right now that's still not been resolved in the bulkier end of things but having said that is that really what you're looking for and is it more about help with launch and ball speeds then this kind of thing will definitely do a job and help you so Trapman's an interesting thing. It's, um, you know, I mean, a lot of people pay no attention to data. I understand that, but a lot of people rely heavily on it. And I think, you know, if you really want a true tail and that's what you've got to look at and forget what the loft of a club is, um, forget a category that a club has put in, then go in and try them for yourselves. And more importantly, as we've seen just with this club head speed thing this morning, is make sure you try plenty of different shaft options and get the one that is best fitted for you. And hence why I would always encourage custom fit if you're gonna shell out this kind of money. Right, that's me done. Another head to head finished, as I said earlier. Post some comments down below. Let me know what you thought of this one. And if you want to see some more, then please uh, point me in the right direction. I'll do my best to oblige. Thanks as ever for watching and I'll see you all soon.